slalom skiing is really unique in, in the challenge that it, it lays in front of you because, you know, the feeling that you get when you run the next pass never goes away and there's always a next pass. The first time I did it, I got up, probably took me two or three tries to actually get up on skis, but skimming across the water and that feeling that you get of, you know, being suspended over top of something that you can't stand on is probably one of the coolest feelings in the world that we all take for granted now. It's fun and it's fulfilling to my soul. No matter how bad my day is going, I jump in that water, put my head under, kind of give myself a shake and come up. And it's like hitting the reset button. It's like everything that I've been holding on in my body can then just be flushed out and I'm just starting over again. When I was 10 years old, my parents bought a house on a lake and uh, one of my neighbors happened to be a professional water skier. I saw him out on the lake every day, uh, swerving, skiing, having fun. And uh, one day we, we had a boat, an old 20 foot Boston Whaler and had a lot of fun just goofing off behind that. And we stopped him and asked him, asked him what the deal was and how the course worked and all that. And um, from there, I tried the, the course for the first time that day, didn't run it, got maybe a buoy. Um, but from there, I started skiing it more and practicing and uh, ran it. And for anybody that's ever run a slalom course, you know, it's it's addicting. Once you run it once, you're hooked. When I first started, I, I was I was always a pretty high, hyperactive kind of kid. And, and uh, we went skiing on a holiday with some friends of my parents who had a boat. And I was forever playing in the water. My parents dabbled with skiing and it was never any, uh, it was just a, uh, maybe a once or twice a year kind of thing and, and uh, I got thrown some skis, a pair of skis that were twice the size of me and a life jacket and and uh, we enjoyed it, you know, I got up and, and away I went but uh, I wasn't particularly good at the start but um, then we joined a club uh, back in back in Hamilton and um, we, I guess my parents just found that it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a hell of a family sport. You know, we had an outboard boat and we just spent time every weekend he would take me to the lake and it's, it's what we did. And uh, I thank him for that, for sure. It was, um, it was a great way to grow up. And from that point, I ended up at a ski school. And I, it was, I, I just loved it. It was just something that, that I, I don't know if, if, if passion is the right word at a really young age, but just something that I was really drawn to. And I loved doing it every day, and I couldn't get enough of it. And, you know, pro skiing, you know, became something that I wouldn't say just happen, but you know, all of a sudden you find yourself at a point where you're like, wow, man, I, I, I think you know, that maybe I could do this. I'd really like to, to take a shot at this, and, and, uh, and then here I am. Uh, my first experience with water skiing was at my aunt's cottage um, in the St. Lawrence River when I was about seven years old, and it was uh, my brother who did it first. My brother Dan jumped on the skis, boom, no problem, got up. And I was looking at the weeds and I was looking at the water and I was thinking about all the fish we had caught. And it was kind of looming in the back of my mind and I was nervous about it. And it took me, a, uh, you know, I don't know how many tries to actually get up the nerve to do it. But the first time I did it, I got up, probably took me two or three tries to actually get up on skis. but skimming across the water and that feeling that you get of you know being suspended over top of something that you can't stand on is probably one of the coolest feelings in the world that we all take for granted now now we're out behind the boat you know either doing a flip or carving a turn or micro adjusting things but it's that that sensation and that look on people's face when they first skim across the water and they realize man I'm suspended across water that you you get hooked you the claws get in deep and and whether you take it to a pro level or whether you know you are a cottage skier your whole life you you never lose that feeling of of accomplishment of doing something that you can't just walk across your pool but you can water ski across any body of water
stories What I know what it is is pouring, wiring up You're breaking your crown I can remember it's been Casey and I on Lake Tuscawilla uh, taking sets together and that's really been the the most fun part of skiing for me is is having a brother that wants to wants to go out and rip every day and we push each other constantly on and off the water no matter what we're doing we're having having fun doing it and uh, seeing who can be the best and for both of us it's it's a drive to get better and it's a drive to to keep having fun on the water. 1983 um, my father, we were living in a summer home in Vermont uh, on a public lake, pretty big lake. Uh, people were water to ski on the lake and, and that was cool. And uh, then my dad heard about this slalom course. At that point, uh, I had maybe skied once or twice. Uh, I was just kind of getting into it, but just seeing how as soon as they put that course in, how it attracted my father and my uncle and, and friends to really go for it. Um, they caught the skiing buzz, whatever you want to call it. So just the energy that was coming out of those guys, you know, when they'd run a course or they'd make a pass they hadn't made before, it was, you know, yelling and screaming and just uh, basically elation, I think. They were just so happy to, to be doing it that, uh, that I wanted to do it. I wanted to be like those guys. They were having fun. It was competitive. Uh, it was fresh. It was new. We didn't really know ski courses or anything like that, so everything was so raw that it was really just, what can you do? How do you get through it? We didn't know how to do it. It's just go for it, and uh, one guy might find a way to get through it, and then the next guy's like, well, I'm going to try that, and then, oh, well, I did this, and next thing you know, we're running passes. Then, you know, Dad, I need a competition ski. I need something that I can try the course with. So from there, you know, he was fortunate enough to, to give me a present, which was a, a slalom ski. And uh, so I remember getting up and, you know, then I get my first shot at the course. And back then, you know, we didn't know about going super slow and any of that. So I went at like 24 miles an hour and uh, I went for it. And I think I would cut through the gates and didn't even come close to the first buoy. I don't know if I was born to do it or I uh, transformed into it, but I always felt like it called me. And that feeling doesn't ever change. If you run the course for the first time, or you run 39 and a half off for the first time, that feeling of satisfaction that you get from achieving something that you worked diligently at for who knows how many hours or weeks or days or however long it is, that, that doesn't go away. And you can't beat the game. There's no way to beat the game on a slalom ski. There will always be another line length. And that's the challenge to see how good can you be, you know? And we get better and yes, we're great skiers, but then you're just refining, you're refining your craft and, and just the act of that. I think it takes a special person, a special personality to, to have the patience to do so, to chip away at something that takes, you know, it's small steps and small steps before you get that breakthrough. But when you do, it's that feeling. And I think that's, uh, that's what you live to get up and go to the lake for.